Welcome back everyone to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's video by the end of it we will be able to move uh, one or multiple items at the same time. Uh, so right now what I have is if we move an item with dragging and dropping we are moving one item at a time. Now if we hold control we have this widget appeared that allows us to select the amount. So let's select five. We have two already here. So let's press yes. And you can see it moved five items to our player slots. We can move those same items back with the same type, holding the control button down. And we are moving multiple items at the same time. So the first thing that we need is the actual widget, which is gonna allow us to select the amount. So in my UI folder, I'm gonna create a new user interface widget blueprint, and I'm gonna call this UI amount selection. And let's see now inside of here, what I wanna do is add, let's add a vertical box in the middle of it all. Let's anchor this to the middle. There we go, so we have a box in the middle and inside of here first I'm gonna add a text field. Let's anchor this to the middle and also let's add a slider that's actually going to allow us to select the amount. Let's move this into the vertical box and also I'm gonna add a horizontal box with two buttons inside. So I'm gonna create the first button first and uh, let's call this the yes button. Let's make sure this is a variable. Let's give this some styling. So I have the yes button with a border and a text. And now I'm going to duplicate this button. And this is going to be the name is going to be the no button. Also a variable. And of course the text content as well is going to be no. Now let's select our top text and let's create a new binding for this. And what I want to do is look for the append string node because I want to append quite a few strings together. So first let's type in the A route. Let's type the selected amount column and let's give this a space. And then for the B route, I want to add a new variable and I'm going to call this the move movable amount. And this needs to be an integer and then let's plug that into our B route. Now let's go to the event graph and actually set up these values. So the first thing what I want to do is select my slider and run an event on value changed. And over here what we want to do is select our value and we want to multiply this with something. And in my case I want to use the integer times float because we are going to pass along the item amount. Uh, so to do so, let's again create another new variable and let's call this the item. And this needs to be our S slots structure type. And we need to make sure that this is instance editable and exposed on spawn. Once we have this value, we can drag that in, split it and get the amount. So we are multiplying the value from the slider with the amount of items. Now we want to truncate this value. So truncate and this basically uh, makes the float into an integer, so a whole number. And then we want to set our movable amount to be this whole number. Then also what I want to do so that the slider would snap to one, two, th three, four, how many items. Uh, I'm going to drag in this slider and I'm going to set its value. And so the value needs to be the, uh, let's see, the movable amount. Let's get that. Also, we need the item amount, so the maximum amount. And we want to uh, float division. So we want to divide float with a float, connect the movable amount in the top and the item amount at the bottom. And then this return can go in the value for our set value node. There we go. So now it's going to snap to that specific amount. Now let's create some more functionalities and let's select, let's work with our yes button. So on clicked of the yes button, what we want to do is cast to our character. So cast to the third person character, get the owning player. Pawn is a reference to this character. Then also we will want to pass along quite a few values. So every time we drag and drop an item, we have quite a few of those. So let's create some new variables. The first one, so we already have the item. Let's also have a source 
which is a string, of course, and instance editable and exposed on spawn. Then if you remember, then we have also a direction. Then we have also the item index, which is an integer. And also we have the slot index, slot index. There we go. So I think that's just about it. So let's drag in our source first. And we want to do a switch on string, depending on the source. And we have quite a few exits over here. So the first one is the player. Then we have the equipment. Then we have the inventory and we have a shop. Now from the player equipment and the inventory spins, we want to drag from our character and we want to move the item. So let's move the item on first tree. Now for the item, first we want to make this structure because, well, the amount depends on the movable amount. So let's drag in our item, let's split it. And from this item, all we will use is the item itself. So the data table row handle and the item type. For the amount, we want to use the movable amount. Uh, so basically uh, the amount that we have selected to be moved. Then for the source, we can directly plug in the source. Same goes for the direction, the item slot and the slot index. Now, once we've finished with this, we can again, as our third person character, we can refresh our inventory widget. So refresh inventory widget, there we go. Now let's work on the bottom. So on the bottom from the shop, we want to create a widget and this widget will be our confirm by widget. Since for the shop, we have created this widget. The player reference is our third person character. The item index is, so these variables right here. So let's copy all of those here. So we have the item index, we have the direction, we have a source and we have a slot index. So uh, I've arranged these in the correct order. And now for the item, again, we want to make this item right here. So I'm going to copy all of these nodes right here and plug it in. Then from here, what we can do is add to viewport to add our confirm by widget to our screens. And once we are done with this, we can simply remove from parent this uh, amount selection widget. Now on mouse button no click, we want to have an on click event and we can simply plug this in at the end, which simply removes the widget from our screens. Now there is one more function that I want to use. So every time if I move a single item, uh, well, every time when I move an item in general, I'm going to spawn this widget. But if I spawn, uh, want to move only one item at a time, I will have a custom event for this widget. So custom event, and I'm going to call this move an item. And then here, what I want to do is set the movable amount to be one. And then we can plug that into our cast to third person character and run the same thing we would run on click. Now, the next thing what we want to do is actually detect somehow whether we are moving, if we want to move one item or we want to move like multiple items. So I'm going to create a, in my third person character on the left control while we hold our left control down. So the left CTRL. While we are holding it down, we are going to be able to move multiple uh, items. If we are not holding, we're going to move one item at a time. So let's call this is moving many. Then let's plug this into the pressed. Let's set this to be true. And if we release the key, it's going to be set back to false. So once we hold it, we're moving multiple items. Otherwise, we are moving just one. So now I'm going to go to an, a widget which contains the on drop event. So in my case, the inventory panel. So my backpack allows us to drop an item on top of it. So what I simply want to do actually is let's see. I actually want to remove pretty much everything. So I'm going to remove these nodes right here. So we, all we have is the item drag and drop operation and casting to our character. And from our character, we want to get this new Boolean. So is moving many. Then on this one, we want to do a if branch check to see how many items we are moving. So if we are moving just a single item, then we want to create a widget, which is our amount selection. And then on the return value, we want to move an item. So we want to run um, this event right here, which will automatically move a single entry. And then we can go to the return node. Now for these values right here, so we have the item. So let's plug in that source is our tag and the index is our item index. 
for the direction we want to use our inventory since the items are getting dropped on the UI inventory panel. Now from the true, I also want to spawn this widget. So I'm going to copy this node, connect this right here, and then let's use the same values. So the item, the tag is the source and the item index is the index right here. But instead of running our move an item, I simply want to add to view of port. So add to view of port and then we can run our return node. Now the last thing left for us to do is in our UI folder we have our, so let's work first with our UI equipment slot and on drag detected we are only moving one item at a time so the amount is one so let's make sure we plug in so that we can move all of the amount and honestly we can just simply delete this and connect our item directly like so and now let's go to the next one which would be our UI item data and here on drag detected we can do just about the same delete these two nodes connect this directly and pass along the whole amount at first and then uh, we can see what happens and same goes for our player slots so on the drag detected we can run uh, launch the whole item through the system let's look for our on drop events and all we want to do is from our UI inventory panel we can copy this ending part right here as simple as this or actually we can just simply copy the whole thing except for the first node so then we can go to the things which allow us to drop something so our uh, equipment slot let's delete all of these nodes right here replace them with these ones so let's reconnect the execution and the object reference for our drag drop item operation delete this one extra return node do exactly the same thing on our player slots paste the same thing in again and one more thing that is very important for us to remember is to change the direction. So once we've pasted on drop event in the equipment panel, it's no longer the direction is not the inventory. So let's change this to be the equipment and same goes for the bottom node right here. Then let's do the same thing in our player slots. Here we want to have these be named player. There we go. So we have player over there and player over here. Also one more thing that we want to do is plug in the slot indexes as well. So in our player slots we have a variable for that. So let's get it and let's plug those in like so. Now let's go to our UI equipment panel and we have one over here as well. So let's do exactly the same thing. Now with this being done I believe everything should be working just fine. So let's give this a char try. Get some stackable items, hold control, move an item, select a amount, let's say we want five items, there we go, we have five over there, three over here, and if we simply drag and drop, we are moving one item at a time in both directions. So, there we go, that's gonna be it for today's video, hope you guys enjoyed it, and I see you uh, tomorrow.